Hi Matthews, welcome back. This is lesson number two for our probability unit. In this lesson we're going to be covering the difference between odds and probability. So just to review what we've done so far, we've talked about experimental probability and theoretical probability. So experimental probability is what happened. So it's based on a trial or a simulation or an experiment. For example, I flip a coin 10 times, I count how many times tails comes up. Theoretical probability is what should happen. It is a calculated probability. So it's what should happen. It doesn't mean that, for example, if I have a one out of two chance of getting tails every time I flip a coin, it doesn't matter. It will all it doesn't mean it will always happen that way. It's just as the experiments increase in number, it will eventually approach the theoretical probability. So let's look at an example. We have this bag of counters. There's four black and five white counters in a bag. One of the counters is selected at random. So let's look at the probability that I select a counter and it is black. So I can see in here there are four black and five white. There are nine in total. So remember the number in the sample space will always be your denominator. So if I look at the black counters, there are four of them. And then if I look at the counters that are not black, in other words, the white counters, there are five. Now, if we look at these probabilities, either a counter is black or it's not black, this we learned yesterday was called a complementary event. And when I add complementary events together, the individual probabilities will always add up to one, which is certainty. 100% of the counters will either be black or not black. Now let's compare that to odds, okay? So probability is based on a total. The number of black counters divided by the total number of counters. So this is a probability, meaning it has a total. Odds, however, do not have a total. Odds are a ratio or a comparison of odds for and odds against. So how many ways can something happen to how many ways can it not happen? There is no total. If I talk about the odds for selecting a black counter, that would be four black counters to five not black counters. That's the odds for. So since I'm starting with four, I start with my favorable outcome first. If I want to list the odds against, that would be not black to black. Odds against, I list the event that is against and then compare it to the other. So that would be four to five and five to four. But notice there is no total, therefore we should not write it as a fraction. It is a ratio. When we write things as a fraction, it implies that there is a total and odds have no total. Okay, so let's look. If we're talking about odds in favor of event A, we're talking about all the ways A can happen to all the ways that it can't. If we're talking about the odds against, we're talking about all the ways A can't happen to all the ways A can. I always like to label the parts of my ratio so it can keep me organized. Now, probability and odds are closely tied because if I add up the odds in favor to the odds against, I get the total number of outcomes. So the total number of outcomes are all the ways A can happen plus all the ways A can't happen. So in terms of ratios, I want you to think of odds as a part-to-part -part ratio because there's no total, whereas probability is a part-to-whole total or ratio because the whole is the total. Okay, let's look at an example here of writing things as odds. So Again, that same example. I want to write the odds in favor of a white counter being selected. So odds in favor of a white. I'm going to start with white and compare that to not white. So there are five white counters compared to four not white counter counters. Let's look at the odds against. So the odds against mean I start with not white and compare it to white. So there are four counters that are not white compared to the five that are white. So by labeling those parts, it makes it a little bit easier. Okay, when we talk about odds, sometimes we're going to have even odds. And even odds are when the odds for and the odds against are equal. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio or a 50-50 chance. 
So these are called even odds because the chance of A happening is equal to the chance of A not happening. That's what even odds are. So let's look at class example number two. I did it a little bit differently than uh, they have in the textbook. Um, we've talked about my Chevette before. I had a 1982 Chevette. It did not look as nice as this one in the picture. It was cream, but it had a whole bunch of these like rust spots all over the car. And I told you guys before, the floorboard of the passenger side was not there. It was like a gaping hole. And uh, people that came in my car had to put their legs on either side of the floor mat so they didn't fall through. So let's say that I bring my 1982 Chevette into the mechanic and the mechanic says there are even odds of the car being perfectly fixed. What is the probability that the Chevette can be fully restored to her original glory? So we're going to look at uh, what even odds means. So even odd is restored to not restored and it's an equal chance for both. So this would be a one to one ratio. One way it's going to be restored to one way it won't be restored. So if I want to look at the probability of it being fully restored, there is one way that it can be fully restored out of a total of two ways. And the reason I have a total of two is because one plus one is two. It's either restored or it's not restored. So this is an example of going from odds to probability. I want to look at the other way around, okay? So let's say I bring my car to a different mechanic and he says that the probability of the restoration is 0.65. I want to know what are the odds the Chevette can be fully restored to her original glory. This time I want odds given probability. So I have the probability of it being fully restored is 0.65, which is 65 out of 100. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is put that into lowest terms. I always want to work in lowest terms. So in lowest terms, that would be 13 out of 20. So that's the probability of a full restoration. Now I want to list this as odds. So I'm looking at restored to not restored. So I can see that there are 13 ways that it can be restored. Okay, now it's not going to be 13 to 20. 20 is the total and odds don't have a total. So if I have 13 ways of being fully restored, I would have seven ways of not being fully restored because 20 take away 13 is seven. So that would be my odds in favor of the restoration, 13 to 17. Okay, let's look at another example where we're gonna be going again between odds and probability. So when placing bets on a horse race and boys and girls, it's not a good idea to gamble. This is only for mathematical purposes. The chances that each horse will win are often quoted as odds. So in a particular five horse race, the odds against each horse winning are listed as follows. Now remember against is just not winning because that's against to winning. So all of these odds here are listed as odds against. Okay, I want to know which horse is the favorite to win the race. Well, I can't tell myself just looking at it, so I want to compare them using probability. So I want to know which one has a favor, uh, the best chance to win, so I'm going to look at the probability of winning, which, according to odds against, will be my second number. So Free Spirit would be one, Willow would be one, Foxtrot is two, Gloria is one, Lucky Joe is one. Now, probability has a total, and the total for probability is winning plus not winning. That would be the total. So I would do 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 7 plus 2 is 9, 8 plus 1 is 9, and 11 plus 1 is 12. Okay, so now I'm looking at the probability of winning. And again, looking at that, I'm still not totally sure because these are all different fractions with different denominators. So I'm going to use my calculator to help me out and I'm going to change them all to percentages because now I can compare them because I know percentages, the higher the number, the better the, the chance of winning. So looking at all of these percentages, I can see that this one here is the highest. So I know that free spirit is the horse that is favored to win. Okay, next part says describe what is meant by the phrase odds 
2 to 1 against. 2 to 1 against. So what that means is I'm looking at how many ways can I not win to how many ways I can't win. So 2 to 1 odds against means there's two ways not to win compared to one way to win, which really means that the probability of winning is that one way of winning out of the total of three ways. And again, the way that I get three ways is to add the winning and not winning to get my total. Okay, let's look at the probabilities of the horse winning the race. Now we already did that over here. We already did that over here, so I kind of jumped the gun to help me with the first part. So there they are. It says, determine the sum of the probabilities in your answer. So sum means adding them all up together. So if I add them all together, I get a 1. Well, why do I get a 1? Let's think about a horse race. I have five different horses. Someone is guaranteed to win. So all the possible outcomes are equally likely. One of them will win. So that's why adding them all together gives me a total of 1 because there's a 100% chance someone will win the race. <coughs> Okay, last question here. It says, what are the odds in favor of Foxtrot winning the race? Remember, these odds were all listed as against. So Foxtrot right here has 7 to 2 odds against, which means not winning to winning. If I want odds in favor, I just flip those around to be winning to not winning, which would be 2 to 7. So we really need to feel comfortable converting between odds and probability. So let's just look at a summary here. The biggest difference here is that probability has a total. That's why it has a denominator or a fraction. Odds have no total. I really recommend you label your totals, or sorry, your parts of your odds. Odds in favor, start with A. Odds against, start with not A. Remember that that total in the probability is found by adding the number of ways A can happen to the number of ways A can't happen. I like our cartoon today, two kids sitting outside the principal's office. I wish we hadn't learned about probability because I don't think our odds are good. <laughs> so you guys can go ahead and do questions 1 through 15 in your workbook and all the detailed solutions are on D2L. Uh, the next lesson that we'll be looking at is lesson number three, which is mutually exclusive events and the OR probability.